What I'm about to show you could be considered extremely dangerous. If this process isn't followed exactly how I do it, you could very well create a 220 volt stun gun and that is not something you want to do. As I said before, you should not do this, you should not attempt this, this is for entertainment purposes only, but I'm going to show you a process in which you can back feed power into your panel and power your entire house with one extension cord. So here's my electrical panel, very standard. Down here I've added a breaker, which is a 220, but it's basically set up as a generator input or a 220 volt air compressor output. This is an 80 amp breaker, which is pretty important if you're running multiple appliances. So you gotta make sure you got to get a very hefty breaker in that thing. Now at the other end of that circuit is this plug right here. This is a standard 220 volt outlet. I think they use these for dryers, uh, electric dryers that run on 220 volts. But it's a very heavy gauge uh, outdoor 220 volt wire. Um, you probably already have one in your house right now. If you have an electric dryer, there's probably one behind there that runs on its own circuit just like this one. Chances are the breaker isn't that big though. And the wiring may not take the amperage it's going to be drawn through to power the entire house. This right here is the reason I consider this procedure to be so dangerous. On one side, the twist and lock plug that plugs into that spot on the generator. And on the other side is the male counterpart to the dryer range plug, that one right there. So what we're going to do right now is something a little fun. We're gonna simulate a power outage at my house. And the way we're gonna do that is I'm actually gonna throw the main breaker at the very top of the power box. And that's also a very important step if you actually lose power, you need to disconnect your main breaker from the power pole outside. In no way do you want to be back feeding power into this panel into your main breaker, through your power lines, up into your transformer on your telephone pole. That can create very dangerous situations for linemen working to restore power and actually could probably cause damage to the transformer. So what I've done is my kids are upstairs currently using electricity. I think my son's playing a football game and I'm going to cut the power and we're basically gonna get the house back up and running on generator power. So here goes in three, two, one. Let's go see how they're adapting. Lost power. What's that? Lost power. I think. Did we really? Yeah, look. Yeah. Tw tw Everything just turned off. All right, I'll get the generator up and running. All right? Hi. <laughs> Hi, Madison. Hi, Alex. Okay, so you've lost power. You want to get power up, back up and running. You want to do it quickly, but you want to do it safely. So, shut your main breaker off. Rule number one. Number two, shut off every other breaker in your box. Everything. Everything must be off. Now it's time to get the generator outside and running. Now if this were a real power out situation and this thing was going to be running for any significant length of time, I would move this further away from the house. So as of right now, since it's only running for a short period of time, I'm keeping it under the deck just because it's pouring rain outside right now and I really don't feel like getting soaked. So once you got your generator set up outside, we're going to hook up all the wiring before we start anything up. So we uncoiled my 220 volt extension cord homemade wire and we are hooking it up into the generator first. If I can get it lined up properly. So now we've got the generator plugged in. We're going to plug in the other end of this homemade wire into the receptacle. So we should now be connected to the house with the generator via 220 volts. Now is probably a great time to go back over to your power box and make sure that again your main breaker is shut off. Every other breaker is also shut off, including your generator input breaker. So now we've actually got to start up the generator. And as soon as this particular generator starts, it begins generating power. So one thing to note that if that plug that I showed you isn't actually plugged into this receptacle, that becomes charged with 220 volts of electricity. That is why you make all your connections before starting anything. Better safe than sorry. So let's get this generator running and let's get the power turned on. All right, here we go. What I'm going to now do is turn the generator input breaker on. This becomes the new main breaker for the house. So we're gonna now go through and turn our smaller breakers on one by one. Uh, power will restore throughout the house little by little, which is important. You want to go slow because as each appliance hits that generator, you're going to hear it bog down and you don't want to hit it with too much of a load all at once. So we're going to start up here. This is upstairs. This is my electric stove. I probably don't need that on right now because I'm not cooking anything. My dryer, I probably don't need that on right now. My well pump, uh, let's go ahead and flip that on. 
That one only runs intermittently, so you'll hear that one hit every once in a while. If you've got a smaller generator like my old one, you couldn't run all these circuits and the well pump simultaneously because when the well pump would kick on, the generator would shut off. It's too much of a load. So let's continue with upstairs bedrooms. Oh, we just got power back down in the basement. Furnace, I'm gonna leave that one off right now um, just because it's warm out, but we could run that if we needed to. Um, the pump alarms for my septic pump. And that's it. I'm not gonna worry about turning on the tanning bed because nobody's tanning. It's a fun concept to think about that you could still go tanning in the winter when the power's out. <laughs> so let's go back upstairs and check in with the kids and see how things are going now. What's that? Power's back on? Yeah. We're on the generator, so the internet should be back up and running shortly. I've got a small confession to make to you guys. Yeah? I shut the power off. You did? Really? Yeah. I wanted to make a video about hooking the generator up to the house, so I needed to simulate a power outage. Really? <laughs> did you guys think we actually lost power? Yeah. <laughs> so storm. you kind of pranked us. I did kind of prank you. Sorry about that. And by the way, this camera here that I told you not to worry about, it was a camera recording your reaction when the power went out. Are you kidding? I asked what that was. I know, and I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to know. So it appears like the house is all up and running. Everyone's happy except the people that got pranked. <laughs> um, obviously, fridge is running. I've got downstairs fridge and freezer that are also running. We could run the, the heat if we needed to so we wouldn't freeze to death. Um, what I'm gonna do now is show you guys how to confirm that your power has in fact been restored and then how to shut everything down safe as possible. We're gonna go outside in the rain with my expensive electronical recording device and you're gonna come over to where your power comes in off your pole, basically known as your meter, your meter box. Uh, specifically you wanna look at the numbers if you guys have the new style uh, meters, which I think everyone does at this point. You'll see that the numbers are actually scrolling through, telling you all the information. So that tells me that the power has been restored. So we're gonna go ahead and shut the generator down and put everything away. So the first thing we're gonna do is go through and shut off all individual circuits, one by one. Uh, let me get my flashlight back out here. Shut them all down, take the load right off the generator, and then the main breaker for the generator, shut that down. So now the fuse box is no longer live. Um, we're not gonna turn main power back on yet. First, we're gonna disconnect the generator because if the wrong switch gets thrown, then you could again create a very dangerous situation with that power cord. So now we're gonna go out here and shut off the generator. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the fuel off and once the generator dies, we'll get started unhooking everything. All right, so now that that's out of fuel, we're gonna shut the engine switch off, disconnect the plug, set that aside. We're gonna come in here to our other receptacle, disconnect this plug. This one's a little harder. Set that aside. And now that the generator is off and disconnected from the house, we can go ahead and start restoring power from the power pole to the main breaker box. We're gonna follow the same procedure as before with the exception of now we are loading off of the main breaker. So we're gonna turn that one on, which is a big heavy clunk. And we're gonna turn all of our individual circuits on one by one. Um, I'm actually going to turn every single one on since we are now on actual power. There we go. There, you can hear everything kind of come back to life. Generator's off, everything's unhooked. Now I'm actually going to let the generator cool off a little bit outside before bringing it back in. Upon bringing it back in, I'll probably dry it off so it doesn't rust. I'll put away all my electrical wires, clean everything up so it's not a hazard to anybody. Again, I don't recommend you do any of this. This is all hypothetical. These are things you could potentially do, but it seems to work to power my entire house. The way to make this a lot safer would be to buy an automatic switching station and you hook your generator up to that and it automatically flips power between the fuse box and the generator so you can't accidentally back feed the power lines. Those switches are very expensive, so I do not have one. I would love to get one eventually, but I'm not made of money. So thank you for watching my video today, you guys. Give me a like if you guys found this entertaining or helpful in any way. I appreciate it. Also, I'm probably going to be selling this smaller generator soon. I'm not sure what I should ask for it. So if you comment below, what would be a good price to ask for this thing? It's probably got four or 500 hours on it. Uh, meticulously maintained, oil changed every 100 hours. It's obviously very clean, runs very well. It's always been stored inside. I paid about $350 for this thing brand new. I was thinking about asking for 300 
and seeing what people say because this thing's still got a lot of life left in it. Fresh oil change, fresh spark plug, new air filter, fresh gas. It is ready to go, ready to power a house. It powers this house, believe it or not, for the most part. So let me know what you think. Comment below. How much should I ask for this? I'm not going to gouge people by asking an obscene amount of money when everyone's out of power. I'm going to try to do the right thing and get it to somebody that really needs it for a fair price. That's it. That's the video. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.